I hope you all had a great weekend. We're back at it on a Monday with another behind the scenes video tour of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum at the temporarily closed St. Louis County Depot here in downtown Duluth. Temporarily because we are working on an opening date soon, so stay tuned. In the meantime, you're quarantined. What do you have to do except share these episodes with as many people as possible because that really helps the museum and we are very appreciative. So, this story is, you know, Actually, it's much better told in a bar. Come on. I think this is a bar story. So this story doesn't start in a bar, but it certainly ends in one. It starts with Steve Goodman. Steve is a Chicago native and a songwriter. But unfortunately for Mr. Goodman, he is not a song singer. And that was part of the problem. His first big hit prior to 1971 was a song that he wrote that got a lot of airplay on local Chicago's radio stations especially if the Cubbies were having a bad year. It was called A Dying Cubs Fan's Last Request. And the lyrics went something like this. The Cubs bring nothing but fatigue to the home of the brave and the land of the free. They are the doormats of the National League. Not really a great song and never really did him much good. But he had to go to a family reunion. It was a wedding actually, and his wife's family lived in Texas. So on that trip to Texas, he had an inspiration. And he wrote the lyrics to a fabulous song that he recorded in 1971. But remember I said Steve wasn't the best singer? Well, the song bombed. But he knew it was a great piece of music. He just wasn't the person to perform it and make it a hit. He had somebody very special in mind that the genre would fit with the personality. And so he went to see Arlo Guthrie. Now, Arlo Guthrie was performing in Chicago at a place called the Cool Nights Bar. And the Quiet Nights Bar was a kind of a little dive off Michigan, down in the uh, heart of Chicago in the Loop area. And it wasn't a big place, it was a small place, but Steve went to see Arlo Guthrie and watch him perform. And Arlo played all night long, straight through. He didn't take a break, he just went straight, got to the end of his set, and Steve went up to him and said, hey, I got a song for you. And Arlo was not in the mood. He had been performing all night. It was late. He wanted to go home. He said no. And Steve said, you got to listen to the song, man. You just got to hear it. It's a great song. You'll record it. It'll be a big hit. And Arlo Guthrie thinks for a minute and goes, okay, I'll tell you what. Buy me a beer. And as long as it takes for me to finish that beer is how long I'm going to listen to your song. So Goodman orders him the biggest beer glass he can find in the house, has it filled up, serves it to Arlo Guthrie. Guthrie started drinking the beer. Steve started playing the song. And when they got to the end of the beer, the song was still going, and Arlo Guthrie ordered another beer and another one after that. And the two men sat. Guthrie loved the song. He recorded it the very next year, 1972, and it became one of his biggest hits of all times, almost legendary. And it all happened because Steve Goodman took a trip to Texas. He didn't fly. He didn't drive. He took the train. He took the city of New Orleans. And that became a number one hit song that we all know the words to. And it proves once again, if you work it hard enough, it all comes back to the railroad. And you'll come back tomorrow for another episode of these behind the scenes tours. And in the meantime, of course, you'll be washing your face, you'll be washing your hands, cover your coughs, and you'll take care of each other.